Hi, Mike Fifth here. I wanted to show you the build I was running in the Abyss League that I guess is still very much valid at the moment. So um, this is a throwback to those old builds that um, people used to play with this charge. And that's what I've been actually able to successfully complete the Shaper with and do well, most of the other content of the game available back then, including the Elder 2. But there was no Uber Elder and Uber, Uber Shaper available, so that's um, of the cards. But I did quite successfully farm up to level 94. I got quite a lot of currency with this build. I was constantly able to keep upgrading my items. So uh, let's go through the gear first and through the gems. So for the um, the most important item here is definitely a Vols Protector. And what I started with was, I, I had some currency available to me, so I did start with um, the regular 6 link uh, without any corruptions, and then I eventually uh, pivoted, pivoted towards the plus 1 level of socketed gems, which has significantly improved the DPS I do with the Cyclone. So with the link, well, as far as the links uh, go, I have the Cyclone, which procs the Discharge, I have increased Critical Strike support, I have Firestorm which supports this one, this might change in this upcoming patch and you can probably be using something else very successfully too. Um, this one is nice because it just um, works well with Elemental Equilibrium. Um, we have Discharge, uh, this is level one, level 21 gem, very nicely. Uh, I mean you can clear very well with level 20 but if you want to do some more difficult content like Shaper, level 21 is recommended both on Vols and on Cospreys. Um, then we have an increased AoE, uh, which I do switch for uh, concentrated effect uh, for bosses, and we have cast and crit. Um, again, I tried corrupting those gems, I failed, so I kind of ignored them because I, it's not really necessary to have level 21 gems on those items. Um, now we have Sarconia's head, which is very nice because um, well, it keeps you alive longer, gives you some crit, gives you some very vital attack speed. And uh, it provides you with dexterity, and dexterity is super important because you need to to reach this 212 cap to be able to use cosprees at all. Um, so as far as the links go, we have immortal call, cast when damage taken, increased duration, and vol haste here. Vol haste works well with increased duration, so I'm using it on this particular item. And then this classic setup, I have a lot of HP, so I figured level. To cast when damage taken and level 4 immortal call would do. Well, we also generate uh, endurance charges all the time because of Vol's devotion. So, very often when we proc immortal call, this gives us immunity for a very, very long time. Now, as far as this item goes, you can of course get some better stuff here than what we have available. So, it might turn out that, you know, like the better corruption might, might actually help you out a little bit on the amulet especially with those really nice corruptions coming up in this uh, new league. So probably this build can deal even more damage for a very little cost. Um, yeah, so, you know, th th that's basically the core for the build. Those three items here are an absolute core. So Vol's Devotion, Vol's Protector, and Cause Priest. Um, Sirconia's is optional, especially with the enchantment. Um, I used to run like with a regular high life helmet at first, then I switched and I got the one with um, with this um, chance for discharge not to consume charges enchantment on the helmet. Um, okay, the boots, Aeneas Epiphany, which have maximum life, increased movement speed, increased intelligence, increased damage per power charge, um, That's and 25% that you do not... Um, that you get like maximum power charges instead of a single power charge when uh, when you gain any power charges at all. And that's very nice because as an assassin, which we have here um, on the tree, you have um, you have a lot of chances of, to generate power charge. So you can gain a single power charge on crit, you can gain a power charge on non-crit. So basically every single time you deal damage, you have a chance to gain a power charge. And this works very well with Enias because they generate, they can generate, like instead of getting one charge, you can get uh, your power charges capped, which is of course very, very nice. Um, so that's like, those are, there are like a lot of synergies available in the build because of that. As far as the shield goes, well, I decided to to use Lycosidae, uh, basically because, um, um, 
it doesn't require you to get any accuracy on your gear to you know keep getting those procs off and this is very nice especially for bosses uh, because they can't evade you and this means that you're just dealing consistently more DPS um, with uh, with your uh, cyclone and with your shield charge so this is a very nice item to have um, the rolls on it don't really matter that much I guess we'll have some nice corruptions coming for shields as well so you can keep an eye out for those um, Anyway, this shield works very, very well. Um, as far as the belt goes, this is... Uh, well, I was thinking about Headhunter, but since we are starved on resistances, I figured out that, well, back in the Abyss days, you could get those really nice Elder belts that had bonus to maximum life. And that's probably the best belt you can ever get on this, uh, on this, um, on this build. Um, it's not available nowadays. Uh, because you can no longer get Elder uh, Abyssal Belts, uh, so no more Elder Stygian Visors, and you might want to get like a regular High Life Belt with high resistances, because we are using so many uniques with this build that you will have serious issues with capping the resistances. Um, if you can get some Chaos Resistance on this belt, it's also very nice. But I decided to go like full defensive on this one, it works really well, it was very expensive though, um, I used to run like a regular Stygian Vise, um, and it worked well too. So as far as the damage here goes, you can get some lightning damage for spells, that's nice. You can get some critical multi, that's also nice. Any life really matters, and this fourth mod is um, just redundant. Uh, but generally speaking, those are the most important ones uh, for the build. Now as far as the gloves go, uh, you go for um, the... Insanity Essence ones, so the ones that give you more attack and cast speed. This is very important because the most, uh, like most of the time when clearing maps, you'll be actually using Shield Bash with this setup to proc Cost Priest uh, Discharge only, so you'll not be using Cyclone that often at all, it's except for like those more durable rare monsters and for those high tier maps and for bosses. And so the the core setup here is. That you have shield charge, increased critical strike support so that you crit basically on every single uh, shield charge if you go into like a large group of mobs. Um, fortify because you want to stay alive longer and um, faster attacks. That's a very nice combo, um, keeps you like dashing through the monsters. It's insanely nice at clearing maps if you have those gloves. And mind you this is more attack speed and cast speed rather than regular. Uh, additional attack and cast speed so this is actually like a multiplier for your total attack speed meaning that you just go really really fast with the shield charge um, and if you pair it with onslaught if you can get like a reliable source of onslaught it works wonders so what I did is since I'm using haste as an aura I decided to also get uh, watcher's eye and watcher's eye gives you onslaught for four seconds on kill while affected by haste this means that you have onslaught basically all the time and it's amazingly good. It's just so, so nice and works very well with, uh, you know, with those glows and with, generally speaking, just with, uh, with your entire kit. Because you attack faster with Cyclone as well, meaning you crit more often, you hit more often. That's just, you know, those additional layers of, of attack speed just add up to this wonderful build that we have here. Um, now we have Cost Priest. Cost Priest goes with increased AoE of... Uh, which we switch with concentrated effect. It goes with discharge, of course, because that's the core spell for the build. And we get, I, I actually got elemental focus and I'm pretty happy about it. This kind of bumps up the damage quite nicely. We don't shock with this, so we might want to kind of switch things around. Um, some people just use concentrated effect and increased AoE. That's also a very nice combination. I think that works nicely. I feel this gives you like a lot of damage. Especially for the boss fights, so that's what I've been doing. That's that's just a very nice increase in damage, I feel. But you know, that's probably disputable. Um, this has been working out for me anyway. For the rings, again, you want to get increased critical strike chance, as much damage as possible, um, as many resistances as possible, and life. Um, I'm using this opal ring here with increased crit chance, increased elemental damage. Uh, that's mostly because I just needed to have my resistances capped for the wise oak and that's what kind of filled the void for me 
So um, yeah, that's what I ended up using. You can use whatever else you'd like. Um, also, as you can see, like I don't have that many resistances on my gear. You can get better resists um, on those items, but I wanted to use the Wise Oak, and I just ended up with this setup and with some jewels that gave me, uh, you know, enough resist to just stay alive. Um, I think that's it for the gear. Oh, the boots. The links on the boots are Blood Rage, which I sometimes use if I want to go even faster. Um, haste as the aura, and I use level 3 Enlighten just for the lulz, pretty much. Uh, if you have some uh, extra money, you can invest into level 4 Empower for the uh, chest. That's also a nice choice. Uh, you can probably replace, um, I guess, Firestorm even with it, and you'll be just fine. Um, that's that's probably what I did uh, anyway. I mean, that's what I did. I wanted that's what I wanted to do really. So you can you can probably do that and be very successful with that as well because additional levels do scale your discharge up to some insane damage potentials. Um, but as I said, this is enough to kill the shaper. So more than enough basically to kill the shaper. So that's all what I did stick with in the end. Uh, as far as the tree goes. Uh, well, that's just a typical crit-based assassin stuff. Uh, the only off choice that I made here is this one, because I figured I want to have as much crit strike multiplier as possible. If you can get those really nice uh, critical uh, damage jewels, you can probably just, just choose some other route. But this is, you know, 30-45% crit multi. If you can get access to like some crazy 60% crit multi jewels, then you just go for it. But if you can, this is a viable option. Also, this route gives you some additional life, and you know, this build is starving as far as life goes. And I was trying to actually level this character instead of dying every now and then, so I figured, you know, having at least 6.5k life was the way to go. So I did go for this. Um, you go for increased AoE wherever you can. That's vital because you just want to be discharging the entire map. Um, yeah, well, I have the uh, the jewels here. As you can see, the combo is life, increased damage, increased crit multi. If you can get those multiple crit multi jewels, go for it. I just didn't have enough money in the end, so and then got bored with the league, so I just stopped playing. Um, as you can see, like increased crit crit multiplier for spells is vital here. Crit strike chance for spells, not so much, but crit multi is always worth the effort. Uh, you could probably ditch this 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 note here and just go with something else. Because what you really want to have is an increased critical global critical strike chance. Because this allows you to crit with cyclone and allows you to crit with um, to crit with shield charge, and that's the most important part. We do take elemental equilibrium here. We do take I did take and I ended up taking this full. Cyan life wheel, that's very nice life as well. Um, um, I did just, you know, that's probably one of the best jewels I have. This, like, nice bonus to crit multi. With, um, since, you know, um, this charge has uh, all those elemental components in its description, it scales with crit multi for all the elements, and it's a, it's a spell, so it scales with crit multi for spells as well, so... If you can just get those stacking values here, that's very nice too. Um, this is a nice option on the tree, so you get this intuitive leap and you can just snag those overcharge and endurance charge bonuses, which basically increase your your damage potential quite significantly too. Um, now I just ended up taking as many of those life nodes on the tree as possible. Um, I kind of exhausted the options as far as the jewels go. Um, that's a nice note here too. You know, any bonus attack speed actually gives you some um, some nice um, some nice damage increases because you just proc the discharge more often with uh, with the shield charge and with the cyclone. So those are very nice options too, as you can see. Um, you know, the build scales very well with basically all the spell damage mods. So uh, if you're on a budget, you don't need to be getting those high crit damage multiplier jewels, but it's recommended to do that in the end. So you can just get like increased damage, increased spell damage, increased uh, uh, global critical chance. Those are all viable options, but you should end up just taking some more um, crit multi in the end because that's what really makes this build shine. Uh, if you are starved, starved on dexterity, you can just take this note here. Uh, you know, you need to have enough dexterity too to be able to use cost priest. 
so sometimes you might need to enchant your gear um, since you know this build does not really get any items except for Sarconias that give you dexterity. Um, so yeah, that's in mind you this is not a cheap build, right? So you will end up spending, I guess, a couple of exalts to begin with because you need a six link vault. Um, you need Aeneas Epiphany, you need to cap your resistances. Vault's Devotion will kind of vary in price depending on the league. Cospris is usually quite cheap. But I think this should kind of, you should begin with like 5, 6 exalt budget at the very least to be you know, able to efficiently clear those high tier maps. Um, I can do Guardians with this build quite easily, so that's, um, so that's nice. But otherwise you might probably uh, stack some resistances uh, as well before you go mapping. So you, you need to have like those expensive bits that kind of catch up. Uh, with those missing resistances that you have due to all those uniques. Um, oh yeah, and the flask. So, um, Vessel of Vinctor is nice for bursting. Uh, you can probably just, you know, go into like a regular map boss, pop all those flasks and just kill the boss instantly. So that's nice. Um, if you have the vessel, it gives you some bonus penetration. Uh, but you need to counter the shock with a flask. So I decided to get the ample diamond flask here that has um, shock uh, immunity. So those two should be always popped together. Otherwise you end up dying very quickly because shock just increases the damage you take by a huge amount, 50%. So you just basically insta-die to bosses if you don't do those two flasks at the same time. Um, so you get this... Um, so this is instant recovery on low life, uh, helps you a lot if you just drop. Um, that's something that you can just click two times and you have full HP back up again. Um, Wise Oak, penetrations are really nice, damage reduction is also extremely nice. Uh, I actually was using this without those perfect resistances. As you can see this build is actually very much lacking in Chaos resistance, but um, the, the, the regular resistances are on the same level and this one increases your damage and increases your durability by a huge huge amount so it's definitely worth getting just that you know it takes a lot of effort and costs you in other areas so you know your choice basically um, uh, so diamond flask yeah uh, you just want to crit as often as possible so just pop it before you enter this larger pack of monsters and they just basically bash through. Um, and the ample quicksilver flask of heat is just very nice uh, to, to have some bonus movement speed for Cyclone. Uh, I ended up using this. Uh, if you don't have Onslaught uh, on your jewel and you don't want to be using haste, you want to be using some other, jewel, uh, other aura, then you can obviously use something else. Um, okay, the final thing I want to mention is Blasphemy. And Warlord's Mark, this is what keeps your mana alive. It also means you cannot do hexproof maps. But otherwise it works very nicely. Uh, I have some on Ice Golem here as well, some additional crit. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. So I can show you some uh, clears now. 